So it has been raining like crazy and it's been a very cold rain on top of it. So I haven't been outside to really work on the garden or the front yard slash backyard orchard and berry bushes and fruit trees. But um, about a week ago, these fertilizer spikes came in the mail and I've been wanting to try them out and also just get some fertilizer in the ground because my um, plants are starting to come to life. All my fruit uh, bearing bushes and trees so I want to get them fertilized I want to get them ready to go because I'm pretty sure the season's about to start despite some cold nights so um we're going to be driving these into the ground and fertilizing some trees just a few for the sake of the video and we'll do some discussion on it and uh provide some updates about uh, some new additions and thoughts about the future of the orchard so I make no claims that these uh, fertilizer sticks are the way to go. This is the first time I'll ever be using them. And I just thought I'd try them as a nice convenient way. As you can see, the stake is basically formed out of the comp like a compressed um, collection of the fertilizer, granular fertilizer. It uh, doesn't have any plastic coating or anything. And you just put this, this, this cap on the top to protect it when you hit it with the hammer to drive it into the ground. As you can see, I have a rubber mallet for the pounding. And I went ahead and got a crowbar because I read that it's usually easier to go ahead and, especially in harder, hard pack ground, it's better to take some kind of strong implement to do a starter hole before you start like hammering these in or else, you know, you might break this because these are, again, it's just compressed fertilizer. It's not exactly steel. So the direction suggests putting them at the drip line. And for those who don't know, the drip line is like a little bit beyond where the branches extend because that's roughly where the roots will be. Um, you can read all about full instructions online. I'm not going to get into the details now. But I was noting that for smaller trees, one to two inches, they require two spikes. So I have spaces on my property, on my backyard, front yard, orchard, which are really a border orchard, um, for 30 some odd trees. And I haven't filled them up yet. So I actually don't have many current trees I currently have. But I think I, let's say I have about 30. So I bought 60 of these sticks. So that's enough. But I was also hoping to pound in some of these for my berry bushes. So I'm going to do the trees first as priority. I'll get one in each for the trees. And uh, we'll see how that works. I mean, I can or always order more, more of those, though at this time it's hard to get things shipped and whatnot due to the uh, pandemic. <laughs> so um, I may only have 60 for a while, but the trees do our priority in terms of of uh, fertilizer, because worse comes to worse, I do have some loose granular fertilizer that I can give to the berry bushes, so not really a huge deal. But in any case, um, let's get to work. So, I'm, so I've gone ahead and gotten started. Um, I used the crowbar to do a starter hole, as I said. After brushing aside the mulch, we're going to take our spike, we're going to stick it right in the hole. We're going to put our bashing cap on top of it, and hopefully I can do this without breaking the stake. And from what I understand, you want to pound it just below the, the soil line, cover it up. Reapply the mulch and this tree, this uh, nectarine, I had to read the label, I forgot what it was, will be fertilized. So for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I live in a relatively small suburban plot, less than a quarter of an acre, but I've done the entire borders in f various kinds of fruit bearing bushes and row of trees. Um, I've grown them very close together because I intend to keep all the trees very, very, very well pruned in a very small stature. As you can see, they go up all the way back. And I have cherries, tons of cherries, often um, multi-variety graphs of various cherries, apples, I have some plums, I have pears, Asian pears, mulberry. I've got quite a collection here, um, and maybe someday we can do a full tour. But I also have a couple new additions. Now one of this, these is actually a three variety, three grafted variety cherry, which I'm very excited about. I just ordered this from fastgrowingtrees.com. Um, I'm, I'm, I like that site, I highly recommend them. Um, I am not, they are not a sponsor of mine. I just, I always, I have a pretty well watched video about them. I've always had good luck with them. If we walk down, here are some more apples. Again, I'm not going to go into all the details. But uh, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you'll know that a lot of these trees came from my previous property when I had many, many, many more acres. In fact, I had a more of a traditional orchard where I planted these originally. I'm happy to report that it seems like all of them survived. A few of the, the tree, trees got a little roughed up and are a little sad, but they seem to have all survived the transfer. I had to dig them up out of the ground, drive them a couple hours to this new property, and they all look like they're coming through. So that's great. So I'm hoping for a really good year for all of these. And that's part of the reason why I want to make sure they get fertilized. So let's talk about this one. This is another variety of Asian pear. 
to match the other Asian pear I have here. And I have some smaller pear trees and our neighbor off to the right there. Uh, she also has a, a very mature pear tree. So we're hoping for lots of cross pollination. I'll show you the variety as I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. And uh, again, this is from fastgrowingtrees.com. Um, and again, I like their trees. It came with, uh, with fruit starting and leaves. Uh, they're probably in a much uh, uh, warmer climate than I am, so the, the plants had already gotten started. Maybe this was even in greenhouse for all I know. You'll also notice that there's some electrical tape. These don't always survive the shipping process. Um, or if they survive, they're usually a little battle wounded. So this, this was actually broken almost all the way off. I reattached it and taped it down with electrical tape. And you'll see that a lot of my trees because I found that to be a very cheap, very easy sort of... Um, solution or alternative to grafting tape. And we'll talk about that more in the future when we do some actual grafting, but it seems like this is surviving this branch, though um, I'm not sure the long term, but again, it's only one small piece of one branch, so I think we'll be okay. As someone who's lost a lot of fruit bushes and fruit trees in my time, I always get nervous um, <laughs> come springtime because that's when you discover what survived the winter and what didn't. And I've definitely had, had fatalities in my time of growing. But I'm very excited because this, this large bush cherry and this large bush cherry look like they're going to finally flower. This may be the first year that I have bush cherries, and I'm very excited about that. Also of particular excitement in the, the, the bush fruit, fruiting bush area <laughs> is uh, the honeyberries. I love honeyberries so much. They, they've turned out to be one of my favorite fruits to grow. They're incredibly productive, incredibly hardy, and start fruiting right off the bat. Pretty much as soon as the weather stopped being kind of cold, they put on flowers. They put on leaves, they put on flowers, and they're ready to go. Not all the varieties. I have a honeyberry there that's just starting to leaf out. Another variety there that's just starting to leaf out. But two varieties of honeyberries are very, very early starters. And uh, I'm so excited about honeyberries. They're basically, for those who don't know, they're like a weird cheap blueberry. But... So they have all the health benefits, the same color, have all the great anti antioxidants that blueberries have, but the plants themselves are way less fussy. They can deal with a wider variety of soils, and um, I highly recommend them. And this, there's one little open patch in my berry bush hedge that I think I'm going to fill with, with, berry, with honeyberries. So I've actually ordered two more plants that I'll be putting in here, and I'll have space for a third. I was hoping to get a uh, champagne um, a champagne current, but that's my state. It's not, you're not allowed to ship those into the state due to really antiquated rules. Uh, so I don't know if I'll ever end up getting one, but I hope to save a spot for that so to, to acquire one day through, you know, questionable means. Well, the work is all done, um, but I'm realizing I need more trees. <laughs> or at the very least, I don't have as many as I thought I did. Um, I was able to actually go back through, put two stakes for each tree. Um, for the pawpaws, I ended up deciding to... I mean, they, they're still alive. They passed the scratch test. They may decide to do something this year. So I went ahead and gave them each one, because they're, they're just twigs. I gave them each one stake. And I figure if I end up replacing them, then heck, the next tree that goes in there will be able to take advantage of that, that stake. But um, as per usual, I did forget my hazelnuts and my nut trees in the back. So they have not gotten any fertilizer. But what I'll probably end up doing is taking some of my fantastic uh, chicken compost or the worm bin compost, which I need to talk about in a separate video, um, and just sort of spread that out around here to help these trees. These trees are kind of, we'll see what happens. A lot of the nut trees that I planted here, I took from my old property. They weren't in the best shape. I don't even know if they'll do anything. They're going to take a billion years before they produce anything anyway. Uh, the hazelnuts I'm more concerned about, um, so that would have been nice to get fertilizers. But again, I have granular fertilizer that I can just put down. Because in the past, to fertilize something, I've basically done what I do with stakes. I drill a hole in the ground, put granular fertilizer. It's basically the same thing. I just wanted to try the stakes because they were slightly more convenient and thought it'd be a quick and easy way. So we'll see how they go. I'll definitely keep you updated. So be sure to um, give this video a thumbs up if you would. I appreciate you sitting through. This will probably end up being kind of a long video and all editing is done. Um, as always, uh, I hope you're uh, gonna stick around and subscribe to my channel so you can see updates and see how my backyard slash front yard orchard goes. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey. Bye-bye.